Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and I've got my neighbor Steve down here to help me move some dirt today. And I'm pretty excited to do this because he has a tractor model that's very similar in size to mine, but quite a bit different in price and in horsepower. And I've really been wanting to kind of compare this machine to this one so I can read the spec sheets and see what's supposed to be different. But I just wonder, sitting in the seat, if they really feel like drastically different tractors. So this is a 3025E. Yep. Tell us a little bit about how long you've had this and if, if you've been happy with it so far. Yeah, I bought the tractor in 2019 when I retired. Uh, I just have a little over three acres of ground, so I didn't need a big tractor. So I did my little bit of research on them. So I figured a 25 horses would fit me really well. So I went and looked at all of them. Uh, the Mahindras, the... Uh, uh, coyotes, uh, New Holland, and decided with the John Deere. Everyone says John Deere paint's expensive, and I would say John Deere R paint is expensive. They're trying to market premium features to someone who's not as concerned about the price. The E-Tractors, I think, are competitive with most of the other companies, and uh, I still like John Deere. So I'm excited to put a few hours on these and see how they do. I'm ready. All right. The job today is finishing this drainage ditch that I started about a week ago when the Summit tractor was here. And we kind of got rained out and I had to stop and do another project, but this ditch is meant to take overflow from the pond and rainwater from this area and run it down to the drainage ditch on the road. And I've kind of got the shape formed, but then it's rained a bunch and we've got a bunch of dirt in the center that needs drug out and we're going to carry this up to the koi pond. I can tell that I sit up higher, I can feel that immediately. Bigger tires. The first day working on this had created a low spot in the center of this ditch, which means that by putting our tires in the center and driving down each side, we're continuing with that shape. So we did quite a few passes just with a box blade on each machine. I think that my 2038R is the most ergonomic well-designed and fun to operate tractor that I've been on and I've been on quite a few but there's an eleven thousand dollar price difference between the two machines being used here and I'm just trying to get my head around if you can justify that or not and I guess it just depends on the individual what do you think? is it working? I think it's working I think uh, you get your tiller we get it down through there right now. We're scraping what a couple inches at a time. Mm -hmm. Maybe we get the tiller, we can get a little bit deeper. Yeah, that's my only thing is right now it feels it's we're removing dirt, so this spot's lower, but it feels kind of flat, flat and lower. Yeah. We're we're maybe just an inch or two lower in the middle, but not much. So, you want to try the tiller? I think uh, I, don't know. I don't know how deep you want to go, but uh, tiller gets a little bit deeper. Yeah, I think I'd and like... And once we get the tiller, then we can put the box blade on each side like we did and then V it in. So. Okay. 
Sounds like a plan to me. Okay. I'd like, I think the middle should be maybe eight or ten inches lower than the lower sides. Than the side. Sound right to you? Yep. They give you good drainage that way, I think. As I edit this video, I realize I didn't do a great job of explaining the optional differences between the two machines. One of them I'm a huge fan of is the auto throttle. But there are other features like the removable loader that I really just don't care about. I've only taken my loader off twice just for the sake of doing it in a demonstration. Some of the other Differences are the mid-mount PTO for a mid-mount mower or a front snowblower or something like that. My tractor also has cruise control and a really excellent design on the backhoe, which is the best setup I've seen for a tractor backhoe in that I can take it on and off in about two minutes with very little effort. As a trade-off to that, I've already mentioned the huge price difference. But additionally, with the 3025, you don't have to worry about any type of a regen or exhaust system on it. And it's got bigger tires, front and back. Actually, fairly significant difference on the tires. And it's got a wider bucket. And I don't feel a big difference in that 25 horsepower, personally. Any other differences in wheelbase, length, lift height, lift capacity are all very minor and really not enough to be a deciding factor. I am thrilled with the way this is turning out, but I think we've got a little bit of a low spot right over here that's going to be a place where water still pools and we want it all to run into this swale. So he's dragging dirt back now into that low spot. Right here has been a mud puddle since I bought the property. And I've worked on it in a few different ways and it's still always been a mud puddle. So two things I wanna talk about here. One is the project. 
I wanted to drain water from the pond down to the road, and I was originally thinking I was going to dig a trench, buy pipe, buy landscape fabric, buy rock, put in a drainage, like a French drain. I think that would have been a waste of about $1,200 in material. I think the, this kind of a shallow trench is kind of underrated, if you ask me, and didn't spend a dime on it. Seems like it'll work. I think it will. Looks a lot better than it did. And uh, like I said, you'll, you will get some, some wash it down, but once you do, you, know, you can put your dirt back over in your low spot. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I think it came out really nice. It's gonna look good for you, Brock. And so I, I really appreciate Steve coming down here and helping me, and I told him we'll trade a day's work. He's got a stump that he wants at gone, and we're gonna, we're gonna mess with that sometime soon. Yep. So, then I also want to talk about the tractors. So, I guess first, did you notice any major differences between the two machines? No, no major differences. You know, yours is a lot more powerful than mine, obviously. But, and then I talked to you about the response time on the bucket. Uh, mine's a little bit quicker. Mm -hmm. But uh, other than that, uh, yeah, they both work great. And they feel like the, the same size machine, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know why mine's not called a 3 Series, because they're almost the same size machine. The biggest difference between them in size is he has bigger tires. I wish they would have put bigger tires on my machine. Yeah, will yours handle bigger tires? There's one guy who took like the 3038E tires and put them on to a 2038, and they're just a couple inches bigger, but the, the ratio still works, and it has clearance, but you're spending a bunch of money. Yeah, okay. And also, like the... I don't, I don't know if you notice it when you're in, say, some uh, mud or loose gravel or something where these are going to stink down, sink down a little bit further than, than mine does. But There's I mean, another kind of tire that, I think it might be the R14s or one of the turf tires that I went and visited. A guy has the same tractor but with a different type of tire, and it's like two inches taller. Uh, he mentioned the loaders. You can term it two different ways either his his loader is either responsive or or jerky I, or, and mine is either slow or it's smooth i don't know which way you'd call it <laughs> but there's definitely a difference just gotta get used to it so now just i comment a lot on the overall tractor market and it seems like i'm always comparing my tractor negatively towards other machines but there are a list of things i love about my tractor ergonomically I think it's fantastic I've had no problems with it it's got a lot of power and fits in a small space but if I was buying a machine to do like what you do you said you have three acres yeah. three acres he does a garden he's dug a trench like this I don't really notice a bunch of difference from that horsepower like digging this trench feels about the same yep. and we had your tiller on my tractor and your tiller is a foot wider than my tiller so it, I was handle a little it concerned fine. there, but yeah, it handled it fine. So I think the only time you need the extra horsepower that mine has is for certain three-point attachments like the stump grinder that, yep. that I had from Bombalite. But other than that, the reason I always compare mine negatively is because of price. So do you mind sharing approximately what that machine cost? Just the tractor alone or with the implements? Either way. Okay. When I bought it, I bought it in 2019, brand new. I got the tractor, the front end loader, the tiller, five foot tiller, and a box blade for $20,500. So for all you people who say green paint's expensive, mine is, my tractor package, I got it with like everything you could get and a backhoe and everything else, it was like $52,000. The tractor alone today at John Deere is 33, or 31. I think it's 31 something for just that machine. And I think it's a great machine, but for the average guy who's got three acres or five acres and you've put 300 hours on your machine, mm -hmm. I don't know that you're going to see um, $15,000 of value difference. And so I think it's a lot of machine for what you pay for it. And yeah. I think you've got where I say I've said the same thing about some other brands that I compared to mine, saying you're getting more value for what you paid for it. That's right. But with this, if you trust the John Deere dealership network and the, the name and the parts availability, then you're getting that price with all of that too. Yep. I appreciate yep. you coming down and recording with me. Not a problem. Not a problem. I enjoyed it.
I appreciate you guys taking time to watch the video. I'll put links on the screen to more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.